Yes, you read the title right. I will be ranking every Drake song from worst to best within his discography. One of the most popular artists and icons of all time has a long list of music in his discography dating back to 2009 and beyond. But after the release of For All The Dogs, I felt it was my need to conquer the task of ranking all of Drake's discography from 274th to the first you ready? Cause man, this took a lot of time. <laughs> this obviously took some time. So I'd appreciate it if you just like the oh, video for me and subscribe if you want to. So without further ado, the wait is no longer. Let's get into the video. Before we get into this video, I will have to note that this list is subjective. We will disagree. So in any intro or outro or interlude will not be included in the listing. So these songs right here are not in the rankings within this video. And shout out to Fracture. He did this same video, I think it said two years ago, and he put together a very good video of ranking Drake songs. But let's get into it. The bed squeaking sample on this song makes this song the biggest joke in his discography. The most underwhelming Wayne feature you'll ever get. Some of the worst singing I've ever heard. Who else hates when girls play this song on their birthday? The end of this song kills it completely. Why slow this song down? I will never understand. The instrumental hurts my ears. The minute long interlude is one of the worst decisions he's ever made. Giveon's part is great, but too bad is at the end. This song is so not good, but so addictive. Come on, the song is called BBL Love. Drake impersonating his 10th different accent. The most disappointing song in Drake's catalog. I will never understand. Uh, never mind, I'm not even gonna. The instrumentation is really cool within this song. The blandest of the bland when it comes to Drake. The Drake impersonation on this song just sounds awkward to me. I like the different sound of this song, but it's not done the best, so. Honestly, just a CLB skip for me. And the exact same thing goes for this song as well. A cool little love tale. I mean, it's okay. It's all right. 2020 train music. Nothing okay, but nothing too wrong. The lowest rated view song on this ranking. I want to love this song, which he keeps so bad. I really do. A song for a Louis Vuitton campaign. Scorpion's pretty bland to me. This song is bland to me. I like this song. It's not deep at all, but I like it. Same with this one. And I love more life, but this song's annoying. If I was older, I'd love Kid Cudi. I already know I would. A cool little single there in Aubrey's prime rap era. And same with the right hand, literally dropped on the same day. People gonna hate this one, but I never understood the hype. I never watched the grassy, but this song is what I imagined the show was like. Wasn't this song about Georgia Smith? I don't I don't remember. Shout out to Esteban McGimmores. Back when Drake was being compared to Trey songs. Yeah, I couldn't tell you the last time I read a book, Drake. People say this trio sucks. I guess I'm not like people. The first mention of what a time to be alive. Hey, Future did good on his contributions towards CLB. When strippers see Drake walk up in their section, they get geeked. Do your thing, 21, do your thing. As much as I love Nothing Was The Same, I have no opinion on this song. Cool little song at the beginning of the year. You know, it was cool. I can see how people dislike more life for songs like this. This man openly dissing Rihanna. <laughs> That's hilarious. Not the biggest fan of Birdman's outro on this one, for real. Kind of boring, but a cool little message to his son. Been waiting for Yachty to make a song with Drake, and they finally did it. Decent storytelling from a youthful Drake. I ain't heard this song in years since this month. It's cool, I guess. The last 25 seconds are the best parts of this song. An Honestly Nevermind song before Honestly Nevermind. The most underwhelming song in Drake's discography. And yes, that's how I truly feel about that song. A cool little island teen vibe from Honestly Nevermind. If you with me and you still here through this point, you're amazing. Yes, you can, Beyonce. You can do anything you want. Cool little freestyle. One of my favorite songs off CLB, honestly. I play this song. It sounds like I'm finna load into a Mario Kart race. Many people dead to me still breathing. Best bar from this song. Not my favorite P&D and Drake collab, but you, I know, it's cool. People say this is the worst song off Scorpion, but I kind of like this one. Drake's part wasn't that good. Again, future hard carry. A good song, but MJ's voice just sounds so forced. If he put Tizo's part at the beginning, this song would be higher. People said Future, I thought Lil Uzi was gonna be on this. I love this song a little less than most, but I still like the song. It's just a stolen X song, but I love this as a youngin. Shout out Georgia Smith again, and I love interludes. I might rank all Future and Drake's collabs in a video, maybe. As much as we bully, honestly, never mind. There's some decent songs. This song is probably the simplest Drake song ever, in a good way. Final Fantasy, it's a strategy, Final Fantasy. I like Drill Drake, you know, it's cool. It's all right, I like it. An underrated song on a very underrated album. Song's very fast, you know, quick beat, it's fun. 
Bro, my hips just start to shake when I hear this song. I can't even help it. Bro, I haven't heard Lloyd since I was in elementary school. Does it bother anybody else that this album cover is off-centered? Amen, the most underrated song off of Fat D. Hey, yo. I love when Drake's storytelling, you know. I love it, I love it. Drake shouted me out on this. He said, hey, yo, blast that, that shit, Axe. One of Drake's greatest bars of all time is on this song. Cool part from Drake, but shout out Adonis. Great views track, but just not my favorite Drake and P&D collab. You want slow R&B Drake, and I mean slow here. Top five Drake music video, maybe, maybe. Great P&D collab, it's just not the best collab. The R&B cuts off this album aren't bad, it's just them dance ones. The bonus on Take Care is just about a girl playing games. Never tag your girl's name on your body, bro, you're gonna jinx it. Cool little outro on Thank Me Later is Thank Me Now. If you ended on bad terms with a person, this song is for you. I don't know why, but I like the break, 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 break part of the song. Years later, A. Wiggs is a champion. Johnny Menzel is, I don't know. Out of all the accents Drake does, Jill Drake is one of my favorite. The one minute intro is so beautiful on this song. More great production off for all the dogs. One of my favorite off Scorpion. Shout out to Lauren Hill, obviously. I listened to this one a lot back in the fall of 2021. I love Yachty and Drake as a pairing. Yachty's one of my favorite artists. Probably the first and last Drake and Cardi collab. I truly believe there's not really a skip on her loss. The hook is so fire when the beat drops on this one. I feel like Mariah's Carey samples didn't really do this song justice. This song is such a vibe. Like, I just hear the song and smile. This not even a true interlude, but I really like it still. This sounds like a more life extra, and it's not. that's not a bad thing. Comparing to Rick Ross and Drake songs, it's low, but it's still a good song. Ten times better than Talk Up. Man, that song is garbage. A hard listen nowadays, but it's still a radio classic. Not the best J. Cole and Drake collab, wink, wink. This is such a view song. No way he made this in this decade. I love the airiness and the beat of this song. Had no clue Kanye West was in the credits of this song. Views hit songs never gotten over me. I don't know why. Aubrey again in his Trey songs, Jason Derulo bag. Had this on repeat after the first listen to her loss. A love song about strippers. I mean, strippers need love, you know? I'm a sucker for Drake lyrical flashbacks. I just am. And even more when he's rapping about something he's passionate about. My favorite Dark Lane demo tape song right here. Girls love Beyonce. Man, you is not lying. And this song, Blim, is short for Blemish, if you didn't know that. As annoying as this song is, I can't be harsh. It's still a good song. This song is so fun. This is my favorite off Honestly Nevermind. Stay close to the people that were there at the beginning, always. I feel like I'm underrating this song. I might regret this later. Drake's a feminist in accordance to this song, so. I like all the Drake tracks off this album that are just Drake. Love Quavo and Travis Scott's performance on the back half of this song. Drake is his own weakness sometimes with his hooks. Weezy started the beginning of this track off hot. The Jim Bay drums and production is magnificent. I love when the artist is the background vocals of a song as a feature. All three rappers did great on this song. No carry, no nothing. I get this song and Blim mixed up all the time. The Frank Ocean sample really makes this song for real. The beginning of this song sounds like a cool, scary movie. I used to hear this song all the time and I ain't mad about it. Again, another song that just sounds older off CLB. The ultimate championship song. They play this every year in sports. Another championship kind of celebratory song. I don't know. Shout out Georgia Smith again. Georgia Smith is so talented. This is the best PND feature on a Drake song. This song would be much higher with Baby Keem, man. Treat this like power rankings. This song is moving up in these rankings. This is like the best singing Drake I heard from this decade. It's just a pop song, but it's so good. Yes, Drake, this is one of your sickest flows ever. Okay, now is where I feel like songs start to get amazing. First song off your first album, what a way to start off. Show Me A Good Time is a good one off Thank Me Later. This up there with my favorite Drake songs ever, honestly. Whatever sampled at the beginning of this song is so dope. That beat switch at the beginning is one of the hardest beat switches. I love the latter half of this song just as much as the beginning. Sounds like a great Dark Lane din 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 personal favorite song off Fat D. This song is tough. Yes, venting, Drake. I love when you're venting on songs. The transitional period from Drake to Travis Scott is awesome. Bro, this song is eight years old, bro. That's crazy. Ultimate sit back and chill cookout music right here. Sounds like he's literally just reading a poem in the studio. Drake buried Future on this song. I haven't mentioned one song off this mixtape yet in this video. Travis took this song to astronomical heights at the end. This is like peak Drake and 21 Savage. This underwhelms a lot of people, but I really like this song, honestly. This is Axe reporting live from the motherfucking gutter, bitch. This song is better performed, like, live. The lowest ranking diary timestamp song. Top three favorite Drake song right here. Peak Lil Baby is on the back half of this song. The ultimate chill song. Such a vibe.
I always remember Nikki's part in the middle of this track. I don't know why. I dedicate this video to you, the viewer. Thank you. I've always loved the DJ Screw inspired beat on this song. Two great singing performances. It's this high for a reason. The vines on this song back in the day used to be so funny. Yeah, me too, Drake. I want to be successful too. Powerful, hard hitting intro on More Life. The title track comes in at 91. These two are a good duo. Call me Big Daddy once you back that ass up. Pause! This song just sounds nostalgic. It sounds like they made this song in a stadium. You either love or hate this song, and man, I love this song. Drake will never miss with the intro. He just don't do it. Drake bodied this whole song. I forgot 21 was on it. But 21 is on this one. This is their best collab. Turn the six upside down. It's a nine now. He said that same bar in this song as well. This track is about being lied to, so no, you didn't lose me on this one. I feel like someone's going to expect this to be top 25. I have the Mandela effect on all the Care Package songs. Bruh, shout out Rihanna. <laughs> That's all I got. Nothing more. This song is so relatable. That's why people like me love it so much. One of my personal favorite Wayne features on a Drake project. My personal favorite till this day off views. If you want classic Drake bars, click play on this shit. He started off this mixtape hot with like this song and six others. This is top three off Scorpion. Legitimately. The college cheer squad in the back makes this song so good. Fantano said this is a top 10 Drake song. I mean, he has a point. I love Legend, but this is the song that sets the tempo. This whole mixtape is some of Drake's best work to date. The back half of this song is beautiful. Shit talking Drake is amazing, bro. Trust me. I might be tripping, but this is the girl from Calling For You in the long interlude. I can't be the only one that hears it. I don't know if I love the rapping or slow down reverb more in this song. If you want to float, play the end of this song. Prime Drake, Prime Future on the same track. Like, come on, man. If you think this song is high, then you just not hearing what they saying. J. Cole and Drake, A-plus performances, but J. Cole was a better A-plus performance, if you know what I mean. Oh, I feel like I'm underrating this song so much. I just feel the songs ahead are a tad bit better, but I love this song. A lyrical version of No Friends in the Industry. The most underrated song in Drake's catalog. I love how dark and mysterious this song is. Underground Kings, underrated song off Take Care. Man, I just remember those winter nights when this would be on the radio. This song embodies poetry. This song is beautiful. I love the little spooky synth chords on this song. Ultimate cookout music. This song personifies fun. Rapping about life, the rap game, etc. What a way to start off your second mixtape. A very melodic message to his future self. I used to listen to this and love me on the ride to school every morning. Again, with the back half beat switches on these songs. This used to be my anthem. I can't get over how much Drake sounds like The Weeknd in this. My personal favorite Drake song of all time. Introduce me to Travis Scott. Spooky, mysterious, scary song. Perfect. Unpopular opinion. I like good ones go more than cameras. No recency bias. I'm just a realist. This is one of Drake's best freestyles he's ever made. Even on an album I'm not fond of, this intro is a classic. I will love you forever if you like this video for me. Not as much as how much I loved this song as a kid, though. Melancholic Drake. What more can you ask for? Brother, wordplay on this song is astronomical. In all me, this bar is still hilarious to this day. Hey, Sanfa just dropped this album. I'm gonna go listen to it after this. This song is damn near perfection. Like, this is where the perfect songs start to roll in. If this was your number one song, I wouldn't be mad at you. This track just sounds prestigious. It just sounds expensive. Summer 16, I'm so happy I was able to live during the prime of Drake. The fact that this is a bonus track still baffles me. A beautiful message to Mama Graham, so poetic. The ultimate number one Drake and Drive song. This is a lot of people number one song and I ain't complaining, this song is perfect. The best song from Drake this decade. My favorite music video to a Drake song. From the church choir to the drums, man, the production on this song is amazing. The first major Drake hit, what a way to start off. The best song off views. I can proudly, word for word, every lyric in this three minute song. The most feel good and joyful track in this list. Drake's and Sample will always team up to make something special. You put two amazing quality songs together and it makes it perfect, it's just math. If you were to define extravagant music, here you go. Very high key, the most iconic Drake song. Don't ever forget the moment you begin to doubt oh, transition in from, from being in to standing, to standing out. out. That's all you need to hear. One of Drake's best cuts off this mixtape. Swear to God, the first Drake song I've ever heard. I remember watching the music video for the first time after baseball practice. I still remember that to this day. The most heart-wrenching love song in Drake's catalog. The benchmark when it comes to quality R&B. 
the Ella Golding sample on Pound Cake is the best sample he's ever taken from another artist. I love to see you fail. That feeling there is the shit, I swear. Ah, my favorite Diary Timestamp song. Drake is at his best when he's just freely rapping. The Weeknd's at his best when he's singing. And if you put these two together, it's perfection. The Weeknd's discography is so great, but one of the greatest things The Weeknd's ever done was help out on this project with Drake. This sad is sad. This sad is sad. What? This song is sad and melancholic, yet so touching and beautiful. This song just has this sentimental, nostalgic pull on my life. I can't be the only one. It has that same pull on you too. Some of the greatest opening lines to the beginning of a rap song in history, in rap history. Drake is a lyrical genius. I don't care what you say. Like you could say he's a meme, no he's not. But songs like these exemplify that. Beautiful wordplay, hard lyrics, it's the blueprint. Just give it time, we'll see who's still around a decade from now. This man Aubrey, a prophet, he just be predicting the future. One of the best R&B cuts ever, ever, ever. But number one, if you didn't guess it already, Marvin's Room. This is the best Drake song of all time. This song is therapeutic and it will never age. And it comes in at number one. Hey, look, I got more content just like this. And I just figured out how to do this. So, uh, yeah, thank you.